Today I'm going to show you how to build a website the lazy way using WordPress and Elementor. And it's called the lazy way because it does not require any technical skills and you don't even have to set up any servers at all. And all of this thanks to a ready-made solution that is deployed in just a few seconds and boom! There you go, ready to build your website using today's easiest drag and drop page builder, Elementor. All right. So let me show you. Okay guys, so for this, we're gonna to go to elementor.com and as always, I'll leave all the links in the description below. So Elementor comes in two different shapes and forms. As you can see, you have the page builder plugin itself that you can add to any WordPress installation. And now we also have the WordPress hosting. So here they provide a complete solution. So they provide managed hosting, website builder, and a theme as well. So you don't have to buy the Elementor Pro installing WordPress and everything and create your server and taking care of all of this. It's all done for you in just a few clicks. So let me show you the price. So bear in mind, you don't have to buy the hosting anymore. You don't have to buy the Pro version of Elementor. All of this is included in the price. How much is that? Well, $9.99 per month, starting at, obviously, you know, and then $19.99 for the business version. So this is best for WooCommerce, as you can see. So depending on the type of website you want to build, a simple website, you can go for the basic uh, plan. If you want to build an e-commerce website, maybe go for this one instead. And then as you can see, these two here, basic and business, is for just one website. Now, if you're planning to build more than one website, then you can go to the next one up. As you can see, Grow is for three websites, $22.99 and then scale is up to 10 websites, $49.99. So depending if you're just uh, designing it for yourself or maybe if you're a web agency, you might go for those ones instead. And obviously the specs are adjusted accordingly. So here with the basic, uh, you have 10 gig of storage, whereas with the business one is 20 gig of storage and also the traffic is 25,000 monthly visits and this one is 50,000 monthly visits. And here in the bandwidth as well has been increased from 30 gig to 50 gig apart from that everything is roughly the same now with the business version you also have the staging environment which is a very handy feature you know so basically let's say you've built your website and you want to add some features obviously you're not going to work on the live website while people are coming in and visitors are coming to your website so what you do is create a staging website and you make all your changes on this and once you're happy enough you can push to live and basically they will merge together and all your new features will be added to the, the live website uh, seamlessly basically so again this is a very nice feature uh, depending on your own personal requirements select either of those options here and once you've done that all you have to do is basically log in okay so let's log in together so now as you can see i already have a few different websites linked to my account but obviously if you start afresh you'll have nothing here blank canvas and all you have to do is click on this button here create a hosted website and right here, as you can see, you have my subscription. So I went for the basic one at $9.99 per month. And I paid on a yearly because when you pay yearly, you get a small discount as well on top, which is actually nice. So now let's click on use this subscription. And right here, you put your website's name. So maybe let's say learn with Mr. Web. And as you can see behind me, there's a button here. So click on next. And here, basically, you can select either a starter template. So basically ready-made templates. Uh, that's going to save you a lot of time. As you can see, I have all different uh, industries here. So a food blog, a ceramic decor, fashion, uh, maybe Italian restaurant, photography, e-commerce, and so on. So there's a lot to choose from, as you can see, and they look very, very professional indeed. Or you can start from scratch all together, you know. Now, this is really up to you. I would highly recommend you use an existing template. Why not? Unless you're very confident in your skills. Uh, designing skills but i would select one here uh de definitely you know to start with so as you can see here by the side we have uh, categories here so you can select also by categories you know what do you want to start is it an online store a simple website a portfolio wireframe so wireframe basically is just uh, the layout itself there are no images no text nothing it's just a wireframe and then blog or magazine so these are ready-made templates so you can either search by category or you can search by keyword as you can see you have a magnifying glass here so let's open this broadly maybe just a business template altogether. you know as you can see you have three different options so now if you like one of them any of them just click on it and you can see what it looks like okay so what's inside and now we have a quick preview of what it looks like as you can see you have the logo call to action yes there's a mobile menu i think this one looks very modern looking anyways you know very professional indeed wow i, I do like this one i really like this one 
Now you can uh, see what it looks like on a tablet as well. And you can also see what it looks like on a mobile phone because a lot of people now would obviously access your website using their mobile phones. And that looks very nice. So if you wanted to go ahead with this, all you have to do is basically click on start with this kit. So I'll click on that. Now, as you can see behind me, there's a message. So this might take a few seconds. So it's going to be very fast, to be honest, you know. There you go. So that's done already. So I'll grab a coffee. This can take about five minutes to get it done. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause the video right here and I'll meet you guys again when it's completed. Okay, so there it is. Now, ta-da, your site is ready. So now we can click on this. Let's go. And that's basically it. Okay, so basically we'll be here among the other website that we have. And now you can either edit the homepage immediately using Elementor, in which case you can click on this link, or you can go straight to your WordPress dashboard. And whatever you want to do, you can change all your settings, maybe add more plugins or things like this and take care of everything. Okay, so let's just edit the page, your homepage with Elementor. So I'm just going to right click on this and open in a new tab. And there it is, as you can see what the navigator here, so you can go from one section to the other immediately. So if I wanted to go to the about us section, all you have to do is basically click on this and you go straight there, okay? Now you don't have to keep it here, you can close it all together. So if I click on this, there you go, it's gone. And now if you want it again, it's right here at the bottom navigator, click on this and it will reappear again. And you can position it anywhere you want on your page as well. So if you prefer to have it here, that's fine as well, you know? So basically here by the side, we have all the widgets. So if you click on this icon here, these are all the different elements that, which are called widgets. And then you can simply drag and drop them on your page. So if I wanted to add some text underneath our heading here, I'll grab the text editor, drag and drop. And as you can see, you'll have the pink highlighted uh, line that will uh, display where it will actually land. So if I position it, there it is, okay? So now as you can see, it's uh, a dark font on a dark background, so you can stylize this as well. So I could change the, ch the text color, and then you can change the font. So here's the size. You can select which font you want, maybe the line height, and then you can customize basically everything, including alignment and all of that. So that's basically how you can add elements onto your page. Now, as you can see, if I hover, we have a section here in pink. So if I right click, I can edit the section itself. As you can see, this is the section and every section is made out of different columns. So this is a column, as you can see, and each column has elements in it. As you can see, this one is a heading and this one is text. And if you scroll down the page, you have the same. You can click on the section itself. This is a section. And as you can see with one, uh, two different columns. If I click on this, this is a column. And now we have our content as well, which is a heading. Okay, so that's basically how this works. It's a very simple tool to use and that will allow you to design very professional looking websites as well. So now let's customize this together. So we have an image here in the background. Perhaps this is the first thing you'd like to change and have your own office images or maybe your team or whatever it is, you know. So basically you can just click on those six dots. Now, as you can see, as I reach out on top, it will show me the header so you can edit the header as well. But if you want to edit this, normally you should click on those six dots. As you can see, this is the section. Okay, if I go to the next one again. If I click on this, this is the section. But unfortunately, you can't access it here because you are hovering on top of the header. So what you can do is basically hover anywhere on top of the section itself, right click, and then you can edit the section itself, edit hero section. Okay, so that's basically how this works. Now, if I wanted to change the image here, you go to style. And as you can see, this is where you will find that image. So now you can actually uh, remove it altogether. As you can see, well, you don't see anything anymore because there's no image. And now we can add our own. So I'll click on this. So all we have to do is click select files. And I found a picture here online, so open. And then right here, as you can see, I have a select button, click on that. And there it is. So we have a beautiful image now. You would agree that looks absolutely great, you know. But now, clearly, the text doesn't stand out anymore because we have a brighter background now. And obviously, there's no contrast between the two. So what can you do? Well, right here, if you scroll down, you have the background overlay. So we can add a background overlay. So this is like a filter on top. And then you can select the color. So let's say we're going to go with something maybe simply a dark like this. OK, and then you can select the opacity. So you go from fully clear to fully opaque. OK, so you have to find a happy medium. So where we still see the image in the background, but yet 
your text stands out okay so maybe 0 0.6 like this will be just about perfect and obviously you can select any color you want you know so it could be blue as well it could be red whatever uh, branding or uh, color you have in your company that's absolutely fine you know so let's go maybe with a darker uh, brown like this perhaps and i think that looks fine doesn't it and now let's change the content of our heading so you can click on the small pencil here and this is our text okay so you can type it all at once just like this so maybe build websites with mr web and now you can change this stylize it so if you go to style you can change the color and the typography so that's more probably the, the most important one you know so as you can see this one is like ar archival as, as a font uh, i'm not too fan of this or maybe montserrat which is a very popular one and we're going to put it a bit bolder so extra bold that's maybe too bold maybe just about this size and then you can change the size as well as you can see you know so once you find a happy medium keep it the way it is and maybe maybe adjust this a little bit and there you go so basically here you can change everything it's all right here available uh, right there by the side okay and then you also have the advanced section so this is going to offer you a bit more customization features so here you can change the layout you can transform you can change the background add borders mask and responsive mode attributes and actual custom css as well if you wanted to so as you can see for the layout here you can add margins or padding so basically a bit of breathing space all around it so let me show you what it does so if i was to add here a bit of margin on top so let me unlink this so i'm going to add maybe 50 on top and 50 at the bottom and as you can see now there's a bit of breathing space on top and bottom so that's basically what this is for okay and you can do the same with margins and then obviously you can change the background color you can add borders a mask as well and a very important one is this one here responsive so if you have a different layout maybe for desktop tablet or portrait mode you can actually hide this section on certain devices which is very handy because sometimes a very long page and this way it will allow you to actually hide some sections maybe on mobile phones or tablets which will improve the loading time obviously as well you know and then right here we have custom css so if you're familiar with coding you can add your own custom css right here because this is clearly the pro version of elementor as well and once you're done with your section don't forget to click update every now and again to save your work and then you can move on to the next section obviously you know so now we have this section here so this is more like an a quick about us uh, section uh, emphasizing and highlighting the main features and the main benefits of uh, doing business with you obviously you know and if you scroll down you have your services and so on and so on so this is already pre-made all you have to do basically now is customize each and every section uh, using the same pattern we did so far now what if you wanted to move them around maybe you want this section second and then move this one afterwards and you can easily do so by using the navigator so as you can see of all the different sections so let's say you wanted to remove maybe move these two sections so maybe you have the client logos before the testimonials so I'll just grab it and move it on top of the other and there you go and if it's called backup we have testimonials after the logos okay so that's basically how this works now you can move things around now let's say you don't need this section at all this is uh, not uh, of any use to you you can just delete it as well as you can see by the side of x sign click on that and there you go it's gone now now if you think oh my goodness i made a mistake i'd like to have it back no problems at all just don't save don't click update and right here you have the history okay if you click on this as you can see you can go back uh, multiple steps so as you can see this one is the one that we removed so we go to the previous one click on this back there and there you go as you can see our logo section is back on our page now and that's basically how you can create and customize your pages so now let me show you how you can customize your website from the back end in the wordpress dashboard so if you go back to your elementor dashboard here as you can see with edit with elementor which is what we just did now you can open wordpress dashboard so again i'm going to right click and open this in a new tab and there it is so this is our wordpress dashboard so let me zoom in a little bit there you go as you can see by the side you have all these different sections so this is the conventional wordpress installation you know and now if you look by the side we have the appearance the, the theme installed is hello by elementor themselves which is the most compatible one with their plugin and if you go to plugins they kept to a bare minimum as you will see all we have here is the elementor and elementor pro plugins and also activity log 
This is just to uh, make you aware of all the activities taking place on your dashboard. Now, if you go by the side with all our pages, so this is uh, an important section, obviously, you know. So we have the About Us contact page, home page. So we just edited the home page uh, right now and then services. So this is really up to you. You can create as many pages as you want. You can keep some, delete some or customize them. Uh, feel free to play around and build the website exactly the way you want it. Now, if you wanted to, uh, for instance, uh, edit the About Us page, you can edit with Elementor. So right click, open in a new tab. And let me show you now and there you go so this is our about us page and again same principle as before you have all your different elements here so all your widgets that you can insert on your page and if you wanted to customize any of this if you wanted to customize the text here click on this change that you can have the styling as well and obviously if you right click edit hero section style you can change the image in the background as well so again same principle and once you're happy enough click update and that's you done with your page now let me show you how you can add those pages to your menu section now okay so let me open the website in the front end so if you hover on top of your name visit site right click open in a new tab and this is our actual website okay so this is what it looks like uh, in the front end and as you can see we don't have any logo we have a few different uh, pages here and also this call to action button so how can you customize this is very easy once you are logged in into your wordpress dashboard basically here on the top you have this bar okay and you have edit with elementor and right there you have the footer and header section so if you right click on header now and open in a new tab okay very good so this is our header section here as you can see this is our logo our main menu section and the call to action button so we're going to configure all of these together so first let's insert our own logo here so click on this section here and there it is okay so change site logo and now we can upload our own so if you don't have a logo you could display for instance the site name and maybe a site description maybe your usp but in most cases you would have your site logo at hand so all you have to do is basically click on this and add your own logo okay and there you go as you can see here normally you would upload your own files but i've done that already so as you can see i have two different versions here so the dark version and the clear one so two different colors so if you go back to your front end as you can see it's a clear background here so we're going to use the one with the white font for this example here okay so this is the one here so click select there you go so it will not show here immediately as you can see changes will be reflected only after saving and reloading the preview so don't worry it is actually there you know now you can do so if you wanted to you can update and then refresh and there you go as you can see now the logo is right here so this is absolutely fine now if you want to make sure you can always go back to the front end and refresh your page as you can see there are no logos here so click on the refresh and there you go now we have the mrweb.tv logo displaying here absolutely fine now let's take care of our menu section and the call to action button okay so we go back here so if you click on this section here as you will see this is using the wordpress menu which is the default one uh, that comes with elementor but you can use a much better one that's now available which is the mega menu now for this you need to enable a few different features so let me show you okay so we go back to our dashboard here so this time we go to Elementor, we go to settings and then features. And from here, as you can see, you can enable some features and experimental features as well. So the one we need to enable first is the Flexbox container. So now active, okay. Scroll down the page, find the nested elements, again active, and then keep scrolling down the page and find the menu section here and then activate this as well. Then scroll down the page at the very bottom and then save your changes now those are activated and now we can insert our mega menu in our elementor page so we go back here again for this to take effect we have to refresh our page so let's do so together and now that we refresh our page we should have access to the mega menu as well so let's search for the widget so type menu and it's this one here okay at the bottom so drag and drop it just underneath this one just like that and now we can delete the old one so just right click on it and then delete very good and now we're left with this one on its own okay so if you click on it as you can see up all these different items and i can add as many pages as you want so let's open the first one together here so as you can see this one says item so let's say you want to link this to your home page okay let's type home and now you can link this dynamically to your home page as well so right here as you can see you have an icon that says link option and next to it dynamic tags and this is the one that we're looking for okay so click on this now and as you can see, you have all these different options. You have post, archives, 
uh, site URLs, media, actions. So we're going to use this one later as well for the call to action button, author URL and comment URL. So the one we're interested in at the moment is a site and internal URL. So that's basically an internal page. OK, so you click on this. As you can see, it's right here. Now click on this field again. And now we need to select the type of field you want to insert, the type of content, okay? So you have content, taxonomy, media, and author. In our case, it's a content, it's a page, okay? So click on this, and now you can select the page you want to display. So type the first three letters, and it will auto-populate the results here. As you can see, you have home and about. So this is the one we need, home, okay? So let's insert this. And as you can see, we have the home page right here now. And then we can do the same with the other two items. So let's do another one together. So maybe about us. Again, dynamic tags. This is internal URL. Click on this again. This is content. And let's look for the about us page. There it is. Click on this, insert it. And now we have two pages. So let me do the others very quickly. And there you go, guys. You can see now we have added two more pages, so services and contact. So the full menu reads like this, home, about us, services and contact, okay? Now click update and let's put this to the test, okay? We go back to our home page and refresh. Very good, as you can see, it's right here on top. So we'll have to tweak this around, obviously, you know? But as you can see, if you click on about, it's gonna bring us here, services, and then contact page as well. So that's almost perfect. Obviously, this has to be centered here in the middle. So let's take care of this now and also change the colors, obviously, you know. So let's go back here. So the first thing we want to do is to change the width of our item here. OK, so we go to advanced and right here you have width and then it's default at the moment. Now you're going to select custom and normally it should fit in automatically just like that. And that looks a lot better already. Now we go to style. So if you go back to the front end, as you can see, the main one, the active one is blue and everything else is black. And that's not the right colors, obviously, you know. So we go back here and as you can see, I have many items. And right here, you can customize the colors in normal mode, hover mode and active as well. So basically, we want them to be white all the time and maybe black for the active one. And when you hover, maybe the same change as well. OK, so the normal color would be white. So we select white as a font. If you hover, it might turn black and the active one will be black as well. OK, so let's click update and let's put this to the test and see how this works. OK, so let's refresh. Very good. So as you can see, the active page is black and everything else is white. And if I hover on top, we have a very nice contrast and we know exactly where we're going or where we are at the moment. Now we might want to change the color. Black doesn't stand out very much. So you might use maybe the exact existing color here, maybe the blue one, okay? So let's do that. So let's replace the black with the blue, okay? So if you go here in your custom colors, this should be recorded here automatically. So let's select the secondary and in hover mode, uh, we're going to do the same as well. Secondary right here, okay? So let's click update. Let's put this to, to the test one more time. Refresh. Very good. Yeah, that looks a lot better already. So that's basically how you can insert a mega menu with dynamic links right there in your header section. Now let's take care of our request a consultation button here, which is our call to action button. And then from here, all you have to do is basically click on it. And now you can customize everything from here. So as you can see, the first thing you can change is the text. So at the moment it says request a consultation. Maybe you want it to say request a quote, maybe request a callback or whatever you want your visitors to do. Basically, this is a call to action button. OK, so request a consultation. Let's go with that for now as an example. And right here, you can link this back to an internal page or maybe a pop up as well. So we're going to use a pop up here. OK, so when they click on this, they'll have a pop up window with a form and they can fill this out and then submit that to you. And you will receive that via email. So super handy and also super nice visually as well. So let's do this together. So as you can see here, we can insert the URL. So this is for a page. But again, like we said, we can use dynamic tags. So let's click on this here. So previously we've used the internal URL. So if you scroll down, as you can see, you have actions and one of them is pop-up. So this is basically what it is. Okay. So click on that and now click on this again. And now we can select the pop-up that we want. So where are these located? So first, let's go back to our WordPress dashboard and let me show you where they are. Okay. So if you go here, we go to templates and right there you have all the pop-ups. So you can create them from scratch, whatever you want. 
or you can use an existing one like this one contact pop-up okay so now let's edit this with elementor and there you go this is what it looks like it looks very professional doesn't it so basically once they click on the call to action button this window will pop up with the content here so you want to make this as appealing as possible obviously you know you want to, to drive as much traffic and inquiries as possible so as you can see this is our main heading so need help to maximize your business and here underneath we have a sub uh, heading basically okay that, that that's going to add up on top of this one so whatever message you want to say basically you know a request a quote maybe first consultation for free first 30 minutes for free or whatever it is you know as always obviously you want to make this as appealing as possible and then underneath we have the contact form here obviously you know as you can see i have two fields at the moment name and email so that's maybe not enough you know so what we want maybe is to fetch the name the email address and also ask for a small message or some feedback immediately so let's add this together by the side as you can see i have the two different fields here name and here is email okay now you can add whatever you want any type of field literally you know so add new item so this one is going to be a text area okay and the label will be message okay and i'm going to copy this here in the place or holder as well there you go so now as you can see you have name email and message and you can change the column width as well so this one is taking the full width now if you want to add two fields you have 50 percent and 50 percent if you want three fields 33%, 33%, and 33%. That's as simple as that, okay? So now, what do you want them to do with this uh, field? What is going to happen after that once they click Submit, okay? So action after submit, we need to define that, obviously. So you can see by default, the actions are collect submissions and then email the whole lot after that. Now you can select something else, you know, you have redirect, webhook, uh, you can send that to MailChimp immediately, uh, get response, convert kit, or even Slack, MailLite. As you can see, this is compatible with a lot of different email marketing campaigns available on the market. Now, what do you want them to do with all of this after this? What do you want this to be sent by, via email to yourself, okay? So click on this and make sure that your email address here is correct so this is the recipient that's yourself so hello at mrweb.tv and this is the subject line as you can see here you can type whatever you want okay so this could be an inquiry from the website or request a quote from the website it's just so you can identify what it is once it lands down in your in your mailbox basically okay and right here you're going to add all the fields so he will automatically add the name the email address and the message okay and right here underneath you have the reply to so this will automatically fetch the email field so when you receive the email and you click reply you want to make sure that the recipient's email address is there so make sure here that you select email field okay so whatever they're going to fill out here maybe john doe at gmail.com this will automatically be the reply address so this uh, just make sure this is correct okay and then from email again here we're going to put our own email address okay so hello at mrweb.tv and that's basically it that we done already so now what's left we have the button here that says subscribe obviously this is not the action we want them to take it's more like submit okay so now we can go back to the top here button and we can change the text so instead of subscribe we're going to type in submit okay and that's basically it now we can click update very good and now let's go back to our elementor page and now let's fetch our pop-up okay so this one is called contact there you go contact pop-up very good and now let's update this and let's go to our home page and let's refresh okay refresh this excellent and now if we click on this there you go now we have a beautiful pop-up showing up on our page and now if i fill this out so let me try okay so let's say john doe and the email is maybe john.doe at gmail.com and here this is my message and now submit okay there you go so your submission was successful and there you go there's the email i received so here we can see the name is john doe that's the email address and this is the message now if i click reply you will automatically reply to john.do at gmail.com so that's basically it so that's us done with the header section so now let's take care of our footer section so again edit with elementor and then footer right click open in a new tab and then from here if you scroll down the page you'll find your footer section and again if you hover on any of these you can customize its content 
So let's have a look at this one here. So this one is called image box. So basically it's a ready-made widget. We have your image and then a title and description underneath. And in this instance, we only use the image and the description. Okay, so that's a very short about us section. Most people, when they go on your website, they scroll down the page, read the footer section, and they, know, they need to know everything about you basically, okay? So let's change the image. So I'm gonna select our logo here, Mr. Web. There you go. And then you can type any content you want here. Again, a very short, succinct description about who you are and how you can help uh, your visitors, okay? Right here, we have a social icon. So we have Twitter, LinkedIn. Let's say you want to add YouTube as well. If you have a channel, so let's look for YouTube. There it is. Click on that, insert. And right here, you'll put the link to your YouTube channel. And you would do so with as many as you want. So again, if you wanted to add Instagram, so let's look here for Insta. There you go, Instagram, insert, and then put your address here. And that's basically it. Now, as you can see, you also have the option to add the official colors or custom colors. Now, that's really up to you. If you select official, it will be the gradient uh, typical uh, Instagram colors as well that will be added. So there you go. This is your four di different social media icons. And again, if you wanted to remove one, click the X sign, it will be deleted. And then you can do the same with the other widgets here. So if you click on this one, these are all your details. And as you can see, this is an icon list. So basically, if you click on this, you can add an icon. There's none at the moment, but you could select one, you know. So let's say maybe a pin here, a street view pin, uh, perhaps this one here. OK, so let's insert that. There you go. And next to your phone number, perhaps you're going to put a phone. OK, so let's put phone here. There you go. Maybe this one here, insert. And then you can do the same with your email. So I'll select an image. So I'm going to say email here. No, maybe mail then. There you go. So select this one and then insert. And there you go. You could have your icons the same way or you can have it without. This is really up to you. And as always, you can change the color. So if you go to style icon instead of black, maybe a faded gray, you know, maybe this color or maybe the same blue you have here. So if this is the case, you can click on this color picker click on that select it and there you go that, that looks great doesn't it and you would do so with all the different items obviously then after that click update and that's you done with the footer section so let's go back to our home page and let's refresh and have a quick look and there you go as you can see all these changes have taken place and it looks absolutely fantastic okay so one last thing now let me show you how you can link your actual domain name to your website so if you go to manage this website and scroll down the page as you can see you have manage domains so as you can see at the moment we're using a temporary url that's been assigned to us but obviously i'm sure you'd like to link your own domain name to it so you have two options here you can buy a domain name directly with them which is absolutely very nice and convenient or you can connect your domain if you already purchased one so all you have to do is click on this type in your domain name here and then carry on and follow all the steps and within 72 hours your domain name will be linked directly to your website and then this url will be removed and replaced with your actual domain name and then one last thing if you scroll down the page they also offer free backup every 24 hours and they will save it for 14 days so you have 15 days worth of backups available at hand if anything was to happen as well okay guys so now if you feel like watching another video i'll just let youtube decide which one is best for you we'll just leave it right here